seventh layoff when he fought Derek McGuire. Though he started slowly, Ward made a change for the better in style. As a southpaw, Ward showed more strength and quickness. A solid left hook signaled that Ward had found his groove. Ward shook off his rustiness, focused on combination punching, and scored well to the body. McGuire couldn't keep pace. Ward stepped up the pressure against his third opponent and stopped McGuire in the fourth. The Lowell, Massachusetts prospect remained unbeaten going into tonight's battle against veteran Edwin Corrette. There is Edwin Corrette, 27 years of age, tipped the scales this morning at 138 pounds. Corrette with a record of 20 wins, seven losses, and two draws. He has nine KOs. Dave Bontempo, as far as you are concerned, the keys to victory for each of these fighters. The way it shapes up for Mickey Ward is he has to fire the double left hooks that you saw on the highlight film just recently. It is his best punch. And he may have to fight through pain perhaps for the first time because of a hand injury which could throw off his rhythm. Correct? He wants to bully Ward, uses experience because he has had twice as many fights as Mickey Ward, and he wants to establish some kind of infighting ability so that Ward cannot walk right through him. Mickey Ward and Edwin Carrett are in the ring. Michael Buffer is standing by to introduce now, the fighters. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of our featured bouts of the evening, scheduled for 10 rounds in the junior welterweight division. The referee for this battle is Rudy Battle. Introducing first in the red corner, wearing the red trunks and weighing an even 138 pounds. He's originally from Mayaguez, Puerto Rico, now fighting out of Brockton, Massachusetts. As a professional, 20 victories, 7 defeats and 2 draws, 9 KOs. Introducing Edwin Ray Curé. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks, and weighing in even 136 pounds. He's from Lowell, Massachusetts. Undefeated as a professional, 14 consecutive victories, 10 by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, Irish Mickey Ward. Okay, gentlemen, you have both received your pre-fight instructions. I expect a clean break at all times. Watch your low blows and watch your holding hit. Any questions, gentlemen? All right, I want a clean contest. Good luck to both of you. Shake hands. Edwin Carrett in the red, and Mickey Ward in the white. Ward, 21 years of age. He stands 5'8", an amateur record of 35 wins, only eight losses. We're set to go. These junior welterweights are scheduled for 10. The interesting thing about this matchup, Phil, could be a horse racing analogy. When a horse drops down in company, as corrected in 1985 after some tough losses to contender, he won the ESPN tournament and did it in convincing style as he lands a good left hook there. After some losses now, he comes down against a fighter who is on the way up, has half as many fights. And Corrette now is under the good training of Don Turner up in the Pennsylvania camp and manager Lenny Shaw. So he's revitalized, coming down, and he's coming up against a good contender. Incidentally, Dave, speaking of Lenny Shaw, Lenny recovering from a heart attack, and uh, all of us here at ESPN with top rank boxing, Lenny, want to wish you a very speedy recovery. We'll see you back here at ringside real, real soon. Ward coming out right-handed as he usually does. And at some point he switches over to the southpaw style. It's kind of a lead right hand from Ward and a good left hook from the right side. His best punches have been from the left side. Edwin Corrett has uh, been on a long, long layoff. His last fight against John Duplessis down in Metairie, Louisiana, back in December of last year. But while I kept bringing that up this morning, Edwin, he kept disputing it. He said, well, now, wait a minute. I, it really wasn't a layoff. I've been in the gym every month. But, Dave, really, uh, there is nothing like a fight to keep those 
skills sharp, is there? The training is different yeah. when you're casually staying ready and then when you're getting set for a specific opponent. In Corette's case, he represents Ward's toughest opponent because he's got so much guile. There you see Corette trying to tie Ward up, and that's some of the bullying tactics we're going to look for from him, try to use every trick he's learned in all those fights. Here's somebody who's been in with Robin Blake. He's been in with Livingstone Bramble, a world champion. Duplessis is a rated fighter. And when you think of Corette, all those fights have been on the road. He's somebody who has not scored the upset, but when he's been the favorite, he's also not been upset. the age of 27 while he will not admit it publicly you get the feeling that deep down he knows that he is certainly uh, at a crossroads of sorts in his career I'll be back with round two in a moment side a lead right hand as he was moving caught correct moving himself and oddly enough it is Mickey Ward who will uh, have to stay away from Correct's right hand especially the counter right by correct Correct's corner telling in between that when he fakes a jab that Ward's hands go down. So they want Correct to go halfway with the jab, try to commit Ward to dropping his hand and then land a good shot. Ward just came in with a nice left hook. And the chopping right, we're seeing more of that than in previous fights for Mickey Ward. Mickey is a natural right-hander, but you look back at the, his last fight against Derek McGuire, and though the fight lasted only four rounds, one of the reasons it only lasted four rounds is that uh, Mickey adopted the southpaw style with terrific success. It's strange because a natural right-hander, you would think that he's a natural left-hander by the way he converted to southpaw, but he's a natural righty, and his big power is on the left side. He says it's like that in other sports, another good left hook by Ward, as in sports like baseball. Even at a late age, you learn to hit from both sides of the plate, and that's stuff you usually have to do early. Well, Edwin Carrett was already an established pro back in 1985 when Mickey Ward came on the scene. Both hail from the Massachusetts area, and as a result of that, uh, they are not strangers to one another, are they, Dave? No, in fact, they sparred with each other a couple of years ago. Correct seemed to remember it as being even. Most fighters don't say that. They always say, I won. <laughs> Correct. Uh, Ward briefly went to the southpaw style and then came back. Correct at one time, if you're sitting at home saying to yourself, Edwin Correct, Edwin Correct. He at one time was uh, in the stable of the Petronelli brothers, of course, of marvelous Marvin Hagler fame, and just felt uh, about a year ago that perhaps he wasn't getting the attention that he needed and wanted. Felt perhaps a change of management, a change of locale might do him good. Correct went to Florida and found the boxing game had pretty much dried up for him anyway. That's a problem of being in a stablemate of somebody like Marvin Hagler and Robbie Sims, too, is the trainers can only be divided a certain number of ways. Mike Corrett uh, throwing the majority of his punches here in the early stages of this fight in a looping fashion with both the uh, right and the left edge. Somewhat as, surprising. As he walks in in kind of a squared up fashion. Avoid the Noid. With Ward is exposed because the right hand is blocked and then Ward lands the left hand coming in right behind him. So he staved off any kind of counterpunch. Live action in round three, Phil Stone with Dave Bontempo from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Good short chopping uppercut by Ward, and now it is Correct trying to wail away on the ropes as Ward simply jumps off of them. One pattern established already is that Ward is in the fight of his life so far, and probably will be. Correct is crafty. He's making Ward do more things and Ward has had to do in all of his fights coming up till now. Spinning away, fighting off the ropes, landing short uppercuts. 
We expected to see a sharp Edwin Curret early in this fight, but I think that long layoff, Dave, could possibly uh, have an effect on this fight as we get into the middle and perhaps later rounds. One thing that has plagued Curret throughout his career is that he waits for the golden opportunity. Now here he's pressing a little bit more. In fact, he lands five or six nice straight shots walking in. Tourette has always been a fighter it's good enough to give the contenders everything they can handle but not get over the top. Well, witness this fight. Of course, back in January of 84 against Kenny Bang Bang Bogner, a technical loss in nine, and then those uh, losses you documented also in 84 to Robin Blake and Livingston Bramble. It seems like every time he, he steps up onto the porch, somebody knocks him over the swing. And in the case of Bogner, he was knocked over the swing by the New Jersey Commission yes. because he initially won the fight, and then on a technicality, lost it. Now Ward goes to that southpaw style again, lands in the lead right hand, but Tourette keeps coming straight ahead. Oh, good combinations by Mickey Ward here in round three, a minute remaining. That's really the first time Ward has been able to drive Tourette back with the combination. Until then, Ward had found that Tourette kept coming forward. Dave, you touched on it uh, just before the start of this fight. Mickey Ward, unquestionably the biggest fight of his young career. And you have to believe, uh, to some extent, perhaps he will use this fight as a yardstick by which to gauge future opponents. Absolutely, Phil, because so many fighters, good ones, have been in with Tourette. And when you can draw that line of comparison, it gives some kind of barometer as to where your career is going. Now, Ward wants to try and land that right uppercut. He has done so twice here in round three. And if you like offense, there has been a lot of it here in round three. The undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson. And Dave, I want to see that man's wallet. I want to see if he's got $10 million in that wallet. <laughs> if you could buy half of Atlantic City, you'd smile too. <laughs> Well, one guy that is smiling is uh, Mickey Ward in round three. The password was combinations. He finally came in and got Corret moving straight back. Now, those punches didn't land, but he took away Corret's offense, stopped Corret's forward movement. Tourette's corner wants him to start moving laterally, especially starting to the left so that Ward can't get off the left hook he just landed there. They want to force Ward to throw that right hand and rely on it a lot. And for that to happen, Tourette has to be moving to his left, which is Ward's right. A good punch that seems to be materializing for Tourette if he wants to use it is the uppercut based on the way that Ward has been coming in with the head down, covering up the head very well. And the only opening is up the middle. Garrett trying to use his experience and his muscle by which to simply toss Mickey Ward around the ring, and Ward answers with a pretty fair right hand. Thrown from a big distance, and it seemed to inspire Garrett to keep moving forward in a straight line. Good shots from way back by Ward. Will be more effective if he can get some body work to go with it. For three, Dave Bontempo, how do you see it thus far? Complicated because of the cat mouse scenario we have. Wow. Correct leading by a point to me. Halfway through round four. This battle of junior welterweights is scheduled for 10. And don't you dare go away if you have just joined us. Our main event for the USBA Junior Lightweight Championship, Harold Knight and Anthony English. Watch your head. This is what we were talking about, Ward having to fight off the ropes more than other fights. And good right from the side by Ward. That's such an edge. You look at the way he matches up with Correct. He can switch styles, be effective from either side, Really, before Tourette can hone in on which side he'll be seeing the punches from. Perhaps the one caution that Mickey Ward 
should be cognizant of, Dave, and that is perhaps becoming a little careless and becoming a little too overconfident against a guy that has the wealth of experience of an Edwin Carrett. Though Carrett's not a puncher, he is smart enough to catch Ward on a switch if it happens. Ward has to be able to switch quickly, and it seems like he's been able to do that so far. Edwin Carrett in the red, Mickey Ward in the white. Winding down the final seconds of round four. Fourth, the left hand is blocked, but the right hand loops over the top and scores well. Ward showed something there, which is impressive in a young fighter. The jab was stopped, so he did not draw back and get into the line of fire. He kept going with the right hand as if the left hand had already been effective, and it landed. He did not give up on the punching possibility. And when you talk about power, there is no question who has it and who would like to have it. And that can be just a little deceiving in this match because of who Corrette has been in against. It might be closer to even if you take away some of those contenders. You can put an experience factor up there alongside, which would also be good. Now, Corrette, with a total of 29 professional fights, Mickey Ward with less than half that. He is 14 and 0. Oh, we talked about Mickey Ward wanting to perhaps use this fight as a barometer for future opponents, but I suppose the same can be said for uh, Edwin Curette. We'll have to let him know where he is. It really is that way because for Curette, if he cannot beat somebody with 14 fights, as good as Mickey Ward has been in 14 fights, he has to wonder just what it will take to get back to the top, and it's a long way. Halfway through round five. Corrett is trying to slow down the momentum Ward had last round by clutching, forcing the fight to be in a close quarter. You notice that Ward has been not able to move as much and do as much off the moving. Now, if I were Dick Eklund in Mickey Ward's corner between rounds, uh, I think the one thing I would tell Mickey Ward, Dave, is keep the heat on Edwin Coretti. Hasn't fought since last December. He's 27 years of age. Don't let him rest. Especially not because Ward has good training, too. But Coretti being in that California, Pennsylvania camp of Don Turner. Those hills are pretty intense up there. We know Harold Knight does five miles a day before breakfast, every day coming in. It's been a good train. What time's it eating? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the 4.6 miles. Says he does it pretty well and with boots. He eats by nine. Final seconds of round five. This junior welterweight bout is scheduled for ten. It has been a good one. Edwin Corrett in the red, Mickey Ward in white. Corrett continuing to loop his punches. Twenty-seven years of age. Back in December, he left the Petronelli's and went south, about as far south as you can go, the state of Florida. I'm gonna give you a secret. You know you can stop this guy. You don't want to fight. Make him fight. Do you okay, understand? I want to caution both of you. I don't want any hitting after that bell. This guy don't want to fight, man. You letting him fight. You got to crowd him, correct? Crowd him and bang him to the body. You hitting him with some good shots in the body, man. You got him. You get him now, Nick. He's smart. Do that. Come on, stop. Let's go. Now you heard some pretty good advice from Don Turner in the corner of that man, Edwin Carrett. Get inside and bang him to the body. It seemed like Corrette did that pretty well last round, but the corner not satisfied because they thought he could have used a little bit more killer instinct. Oh, 
Through five, Dave Bontempo, how do you have it? Well, this will not be one of the easiest to go down. They seem to go back and forth. Corette has been far less spectacular, but nonetheless effective, it seems. Neither fighter has been hurt. Neither Corret nor Ward has been down in this fight. Our main event is up next. Harold the Shadow Knight and Anthony English. And what a war that one should be. Corret just followed the advice well, landing five straight unanswered punches to the body while Ward was backing up and missing with the uppercut. Keep him up. Ward has shown a much better right hand tonight than required in the past, and it's been important, a big one there, too. Now, Curette has spent about five weeks in Lenny Shaw's camp, as Dave mentioned, up in uh, California, Pennsylvania. He says he is in terrific shape and feels... Uh, he can not only go the distance against Ward, but felt this morning that he could win this fight. And he took two pretty good straight right hands from Mickey. Ward has been backing up more than in other fights, but he has looked pretty good doing it this round. Corette is breathing pretty hard right now. It's been a good pace so far. He's really digging down. But Dave, in previous fights in which we have seen Edwin Corette, I don't remember him throwing these type of roundhouse punches with both his left and his right hands as we have seen him throw tonight. He's been getting into a situation close enough that he has to go over the top of Ward's defenses because Ward has the gloves up by the chin. And to, to Corette's credit, he's not wasting the opportunities. He's going looping, but he's throwing them. But there is no disputing the fact that when you loop those punches, you take a certain uh, amount of power out of those same punches. And you open yourself up for counters, but yes. Ward hasn't capitalized. Final seconds of round six, back with round seven in a moment. Initially, like it was a tremendous punch. It landed high off the forehead, just missed. Correct kind of reacted to it as it was coming. Live action in round seven. Bill Stone along with Dave Bontempo. SRO here at Resorts International. Well, this fight has been the even matchup it looked to be. Each nullifying the other's good points at times and doing what they need to do certain times. Well, you wonder if perhaps Edwin Corrette, Dave, might not be more effective standing outside Mickey Ward and straightening out those punches. Of course, to do that, though, you, you work right into the strength of a Mickey Ward, don't you? He wants to come close to Ward, back him up, smother Ward's punches, and then come in with the short shots himself. But Corrette has not been taking advantage of the best shot in this situation, which would be the uppercut. Here inside, Ward is doing that. Short uppercuts and short hooks. When Corrette gets Ward in here like this, he's trying to nullify Ward's hand speed, which is better than Corrette's. And there you see why. A couple of shots by Ward. Ward loves that, uh, that double left hook, and a man who we will see in our main event, Harold Knight, uh, likewise. Midway through round seven, these junior welterweights are scheduled for 10. Mickey Ward with Edwin Correct with his back to the ropes. There's a lot of good infighting going on right here. Ward wanted to throw the right hand. Correct ducked below it. Ward had to recoil. And he's just missing that looping right hand here as it's glancing high off the forehead. But the left hook is still a very good punch for Mickey Ward. He's trying to sucker Correct here into throwing a looping right so he can counter with the left hook. 
Ward was a very, very busy fighter throughout 1986, had nine fights, the vast majority of which were right here in Atlantic City. But here in 1987, as you documented in your profile of Mickey Ward, he has only had three fights and uh, really only one in the last six months. And he had an out-of-the-ring fracas with authorities in Massachusetts. Fortunately for him, he's back trying to recapture everything. There you see Ward trying to double up with that left hand, first to the head and then to the rib cage of Edwin Carrette. <laughs> Round eight is just a minute away. We'll be back. And Turner said, this is like an amateur fight. You've got three rounds left. Go crazy. And Carrette looked at him like, you go crazy and get in there. Dave, how do you have it scored through seven? Well, you can see why the apprehension in the corner as, on my part at least, Ward has pulled ahead, winning the last couple. He's at hustling Corret now, and fatigue a problem for Edwin Corret here. It seems as though Ward is a little bit fresher over the course of the entire three minutes. It also looks like Ward has realized what has to be done to win this fight. There are not going to be any big punches here. There probably won't be a knockout. It's strictly going to be volume of punches and being quick. Gut it out to the finish. You get the feeling at this point as if this 10-round marathon could well come down to a 100-yard uh, sprint. Who has the most left with two and a half rounds to go? A bad little cut around Tourette's left eye. You say bad because he's starting to rub it, which only makes it worse. It's not quite threatening as far as a stoppage. But it certainly could become vision threatening as we reach the halfway point here in round eight. Or you go back to 1980 when Edwin Carrette laced him up for the first time as a pro. And he has certainly been a, a credit to the sport of boxing. One thing Carrette has taken away are the rapid combinations that Ward often likes to use. Ward can't get off more than two punches at a time against Carrette. Now you would recall it was 1985, I believe October 1st or 2nd, in a victory right here in Atlantic City against Gary Williams for Edwin Carrett. With that win came the ESPN Lightweight Championship. Since then, though, for Edwin Corrette, it has been, for the most part, all downhill, Dave. The contenders took him out a couple bad losses on the road, and he's fighting for his life again. Now the final seconds of round eight. Don't go away. Round nine in a moment. Witnessing a good one. These are junior welterweights. Edwin Corrette in the red, Mickey Ward in the white. Mickey Ward is going into unknown territory in a close fight. He's never had to go more than eight rounds. He did it against John Ray Fuse here on Top Rank Boxing. He's been scheduled for 10 before, but never had to quite go that distance. He also got an eight-round win over Hilario Mercedes. Corret, on the other hand, has been 10 rounds many times. This fight really coming down to who just wants to be a little bit more active. 
because there are no surprises anymore in this fight. And as we had suggested early on in this fight, that perhaps in the middle to later rounds, Dave, uh, it might be the time when Mickey Ward might steal this fight. You would figure based on his conditioning. Yes. And countering that, since he has not been 10 rounds before, kind of a tough thing he's got to endure coming up. He looks like he's handling the ninth round pretty well, though. And as Purette had mentioned this morning at the way, and he doesn't want to box forever. He's looking at perhaps the next 12 to 18 months as an indicator for whether or not he'll stay around this fight game. What makes it tough for Purette is there are no simple fights for him on the way up. A sharp puncher can steal a couple easy wins along the road. But with Coretta, it would have to be about five or six real tough wins in a row. Now there is where Edwin Coretta Bold would have simply loaded up and wailed away. And it appears here in the ninth round as if he is running out of gas. Final seconds of round nine. Well, don't go away. The tenth and final round. Edwin Caress and Mickey Ward. Faces in the night. Live action, this is the 10th and final round, and Edwin Charette is uh, really going to have to stage a show here. Through nine, uh, Dave, in your eyes, does Charette have a chance to win this by decision? We have to say yes, Phil, and wow. both of them do coming in, and it's not a matter of the big bombs determining this fight. The majority of the punches have been the short, crisp ones on the inside. And a lot of times when it looks like Ward should be doing the big damage in the early round, he's been missing and Corrette's been pretty accurate. Whether or not that will be appreciated, it's a subtlety and it will be tough. Pretty battle warning Corrette not to Hold and hit. Get off that head. When you look at where this fight has been waged, it's been hard for anybody to be spectacular. Now there's the hand speed that Ward has not shown much tonight. A quick five punch combination. There he tries it again. Where was that? Oh my. You get some indication there as to where it's gone with Perrette tying him up. Boy, where has that hand speed of Mickey Ward been tonight? You would get the impression that he was uncertain about it throughout the middle rounds and wanted to save it for the end because it's been there this round. But other rounds, we only saw him throwing two, perhaps three punches at a time. Well, Edwin Carrat, he has certainly fought a game fight, Dave, but I can't help but think to some extent he resembles a a once proud warrior that perhaps just may be in the twilight of what was a pretty fine career. You see, we're here with the firepower. It's important. Final seconds of this fight, and it is over. you get the feeling might have been just scant seconds away from knocking out Edwin Curran.
We'll be back with the decision. Will it be Mickey Ward or Edwin Corrette? Don't go away. Corrette and Mickey Ward. As they get ready, it looked here that Ward did pull it out, gained a victory that might seem closer than some think, but still a good win for him tonight if he gets it. Well, when you talk about a potential Mickey Ward victory, you'll look back at that 10th round when for the first time in this fight, he demonstrated blinding hand speed. The accuracy was good, too, on the shots as he lands three quick ones in a row and avoids a countering punch by Corrette. The decision is in, and Michael Buffer has it. Ladies and gentlemen, before I give the close scoring, let's have a round of applause for Edwin Corrette and Irish Mickey Ward. We have a split decision. Here is the official scoring. John Pottery scores it 97-94 for Mickey Ward. Lynn Carter has it 96-95 for Edwin Curret. And Charlie Spina scores it 96-95 for the winner on a split decision, Edwin Ray Curret. Surprise, surprise. Well, Dave, as you had said throughout this fight, it was going to be a tough one to score, and indeed it was. As Corrette came across, even though he was underdog to some people, he did a good job coming through. September 27th, it's the Formula One Grand Prix of Spain, and you'll see it right here on ESPN. Edwin Corrette, a split decision victor tonight. Boy, what a way to come in off a layoff. Dave Bontempo is standing by with Edwin. Dave? Thank you, Phil. Here with a happy Edwin Corrette. Uh, congratulations on the win. What do you think it does for your career? Uh, this fight, well, it put me right, you know, on the, on the right track. I was a real ro rusty, but, you know, I might stay in the gym. You know, I will stay in the gym if I, and I will go, I will go to in the ring in better shape, you know. I look a little rusty. I haven't fought since December. So that, that, that show in the fight, you know. In this close fight, what do you think was the difference? My, my condition, you know. If I was a little bit, you know, at least with a two of five before this fight, I would be, you know, in, like a champion. <laughs> it seemed like you smothered him and really denied his hand speed. Mm, what, what do you mean? You didn't let him get his hand speed to affect the fight. Like, he, he didn't get off many combinations against you. I guess no. You know, I tried to hurt him on the, on the body. That's his tactic. You know, he, he's a good body puncher. I just tried to do the same, you know, try to get hurt him. You know, he's a good fighter. I give you a lot of credit, you know. Okay, congratulations on a nice victory, Edwin. We're going to see you back again here soon. And now back to Phil Stone. All right, Dave, for Edwin Corrette, a big, big win. While for Mickey Ward, his first loss in 16 outings. Don't go away. Ringside Report. News of Mike Tyson is next.